guys this is mrs jimenez and um very quickly i wanted to go over um uh, what my expectation is of you when you write an email um i noticed in a very positive way that many of you have improved greatly when it comes to writing an email um i'm pretty sure that has to do with the fact that other teachers um have really gone into the process of how to write an email but i did notice that many um especially seventh graders have not. And this is probably because um, no one has really told you how to write an email. And when you communicate with your friends, it's usually via social media or texting. And um, you've never really had to write an email before until maybe this year as seventh graders. Um, you're coming from elementary where you had mostly probably just one teacher or maybe a couple of teachers, but you didn't really have to go back and forth and write emails to them. Um, but now suddenly you have seven teachers, right? And you want to keep track of everything. And most teachers tell you, email me. Because we have, you know, sometimes almost 200 students um, and it's easier to keep track of things via email. So um, since you, since many of you uh, are still kind of doing this the wrong way, um, I wanted to cover it. And again, it is not your fault because nobody showed you how to do this. So I want to make sure that I am showing you what it is that I expect from you Um so that you, you know, so that you're not just being asked to do something and then never actually shown how to do that. So we're going to talk about how to write an email, um, just like the different parts of an email. We're not going to go into too much detail. I want to keep this video pretty short. And um, I decided, you know, all of a sudden to do this um, this morning. So it's not very well plan planned, but please uh, stick with me till the end so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. OK, um, so. The steps that you should follow is the first one is you want to make sure that you have the correct email address. So for the person that you're sending it to, um, I had a student once who was really upset with me. Um, they came in and asked me, you know, why, why haven't you replied to my email? I've been sending you emails and you haven't replied. And the reason we went in there and we looked at it and it turned out that they were sending it to the wrong person. So I can't help you if it's not getting to me. I want to help you. But if I don't get the email, then I don't even know that you need help, right? It's kind of like if you were in the room just shouting at, or not shouting, but just asking for help and like no one can hear you. Um, may, or some, maybe even worse, like some creepy person gets it and replies or something. So make sure that you write down the correct email. Um, we're going to talk about the... Um, the CC and the BCC on a on an email what those are and really you guys don't have to worry too much about them but just so that you know what those are um, the subject line the greeting the body and the signature of an email and then we're going to talk a little bit about tone and what it what it means when we're talking about email tone um, and then we're gonna I'm going to show you how to set up an automatic signature and um, we are going to talk about why you shouldn't write underneath the signature line. OK, so it's really important that these two things, writing underneath the signature line and putting your message in the subject line are like the most common mistakes that I see. So, um, OK, so we're going to go over to my Gmail. I created a Gmail account um, just for this so that I don't expose anybody's um, private information on my teacher one okay so when you're writing an email if you go into your um, your chromebook and you type out gmail.com and you sign in um, this is what it looks like if you're doing this from your phone it's going to look slightly different everything is the same but it's just going to look different because it's uh, made to fit into your phone format so when you're going to compose it just has a plus sign at the bottom and it doesn't say compose um, so if you're going to compose an email or write an email, you're going to click on here, right? And let me click out of that one. And then we're going to go ahead. I'm going to make that big so that you can see. Okay. So on here, it says new message. And then it's asking you who you want to write the message to. So this is who you're sending it to. Here's the subject line. Um, this is where your body of the email goes and then this is your signature um, and I'm actually going to very quickly get out of here and go into my settings and change something so that it 
so I can show you from the beginning. So let's see. I probably won't cut this out because I don't want to um, edit anything at this point. I'm just going to quickly go in here and delete and delete and then save the changes so that I can walk you guys through that. Okay. Okay. So again, you're going to compose. It shows a brand new email and it looks just like this plane. It has nothing on there. Um, the different things that you'll see on here is it's telling you this is a brand new message that you are creating. Um, you're, it's asking you who it's going to go to, what it is that you're wanting to talk to these or this person about, which is your subject. This is where the body, right? The greeting, the body and the signature go of your email. And then down here you have, um, some of the things that you can do while you're in here, almost like Google Docs, right? Or um, Word is you have your undo and redo buttons just in case you accidentally delete something or um, you want to bring something back that you, you know, if you want to delete something that you didn't mean to put on there or if you want to um, bring something back. Um, this is the, the style of text that you're using. So you can change it. Um, you can change the font basically on there uh, here is the size of the font so if you want it really small large or huge it has those options um, you have bold you can italicize you can underline um, this is the color of your text this is how you want it oriented on on the email you can do a list by putting numbers or bullets and then this is just um, formatting options that you have over here and then underneath you have send right and you can schedule it if you don't want to send it right away you can schedule it for later um if you have bitmoji on bitmoji on here um it will give you that option but you don't have you, yours might not have that um and then you'll have some other things like if you want to attach files from your computer you can attach them with the paper clip if you want to link something um you can link it by um typing this out or clicking on here and then it's going to ask you what it is that you want it to look like and then what the address to where it's going to take the person afterwards you have emojis you can upload something from your google drive from your gmail um, insert a photo and then you have some other stuff over here that i don't think you guys need to worry about uh okay so we're gonna go ahead and get started or before we get started let me show you what you shouldn't be doing okay so let's see this one i'm gonna go into my sent ones um, this one here, someone wrote everything that they wanted me to know, right, um, on the subject line. So this person, which of course was me, because this is an example of what not to do, um, they wrote everything on the subject line. So the whole message is on the subject line instead of on the body. So when we're talking about an email, this is the subject line, and this is where your email and everything that you want to talk about should go except that the person put it up here instead. And so when I open it, it looks like this. And it's really confusing, especially once you go back and forth um, and continue to talk to someone, it gets confusing if it's up there. So just make sure you don't put it in the subject line. Again, don't put your whole message in the subject line. Okay, now another one that people really, um, that I've noticed a lot of students are making this mistake is, let me go into the right one nope maybe it's this one yeah this one. okay so they set up a um a signature right underneath here and they already have it set up in their um in their google account so that it automatically shows this when they start a new message but instead of writing above it they wrote below it and it's not a big deal but it is really important because when you reply to something I'm just going to fake reply over here, right? And then you continue to reply to something. It actually shows, like, this is the third message of this thread. Um, if you look at the three little dots down here, it shows you everything else that happened in this conversation. So it shows you here, here. And usually you can tell who's talking because 
um, the signature will let you know who was talking above that. But if it's below, it becomes really confusing. Um, I wish I had a better example of this, but just whenever you're writing a new message, make sure that you write above the signature, not below it. Think about it as a letter, right? When you write out a letter, you don't sign it first and then write everything down there. You write everything that you want to say. And then at the end, you say like sincerely and you you sign it with your name. So this is your signature. It goes at the bottom. So if you're going to write something, you have to write it above here. So again, this is incorrect because it's written below. Okay. And then let's go ahead and look at a good um, example, which is this one. The subject line is short. It's kind of like summarizing what it is that you want to talk about in your email. So if you're summarizing, you're just putting very quickly what the email is about without giving any details. So missing points for chapter 10 test. So if I'm going through my emails, I'm going to be able to tell like if this, these are my emails coming in, right? I'm going to be able to tell what this person wants just by looking at the subject line. Um, and then let's see what else. Um, they have a greeting, right? They send it to the correct person. They have a greeting. Hello, Mrs. Jimenez. And then the body of it says, I noticed I'm missing credit for chapter 10 test, but I turned it in and I don't understand why I don't have the points. Can you please help me with, um, with this issue? And then they have a closing signature. So it says, thank you. And then it tells me who it is. In this case, it's fake me because I am faking this person's identity myself as a seventh grader just so that you guys can tell right so it would be like the student's name the grade and the school um one thing that you might want to add on here maybe in the subject line you could put like period three or something so that i know which class you're in especially if you have a name that like more than one person in the school um has the same name like if you share a name with someone but um other than that it should be fine um but again it has all the right things you have who it's for you have a greeting, you have um, the information that you want that person to know, you have a closing down here with the signature, so thank you, and then your signature down here with information that, sh that tells me who you are, okay? So when you're opening up again to compose um, an email, you go to compose, and then it pops up this window, you can make it bigger if you'd like, and then you make sure that you send it to the right person, so... Um, double check that the email is correct. Now, I said I would talk quickly about these two things, um, the CC and the BCC, and what these are. Um, so the first one, the CC, is if, like, let's say you were doing a group project and you're turning in a PowerPoint um, to your teacher, and there's more than one person in your group, and you want to make sure that they um, basically have a copy of this email showing that you turned it in, right? So you'd send it to your teacher but then you want to copy make a copy of the email to go to other people so you'd put in their emails here obviously these are not real emails but you just put in their emails right there and then they would get a copy of this email um so that's what the cc is for so your teacher is going to be able to tell that you have a copy for that um now if you go into um that's if you want to give them a copy. So again, you're sending it to your teacher, but you want other people to get a copy of the email. Like maybe you want to include maybe other teachers or maybe your parents or maybe your group members. That's where it would go. Now, if the BCC, um, this actually gives, this is actually something that you guys wouldn't really need to use. I don't see why you'd need to use it. But um, let's say I am someone who has a small business and I want to send out emails to all of my customers, letting them know that I have a sale going on. But these customers gave me their email, right? And I want to make sure that I don't share their information with other people because that's really not the way that you should um, do business. You want to make sure that your customers trust you um, when they give you things like their email. Um, and they don't want other people to have it too. So in this case, I'm going to send multiple emails to different people. So let's say I'm going to send it to myself here and to my other self here. Um, I'm going to send this email and I'm going to write the email that's going to say like sale on, I don't know, maybe I sell sofas. Sale on sofas this week. And of course, you should capitalize these because 
it's a subject line so it's like a title but um and then i'm gonna say like hello customer bloody blah blah that's my greeting and i'm gonna write down my everything and then my signature would be like here like thank you and my name would go there okay and so i would send out this message these two people would receive it but they wouldn't see each other's emails they would just see my email like if i was just sending them specifically the email only to them um, but really i'm sending it to a bunch of people um, so that i don't have to rewrite the email a bunch of times but again they don't know that it's going to multiple people it's just to them it's they're just getting the email and it only shows my name it doesn't show anybody else's information um, so really that's what that is for it's kind of like sending multiple emails to multiple people um, without sharing other people's emails or letting them know that even other people got that same email um but you guys really don't need to do that. Don't don't need to worry about that. You really, all you're really going to be doing is sending an email to someone, making sure that it's the correct email. And then in the subject line, you're going to write down something like missing um, credit for test. And you can say chapter 10 test, actually, because you want to be specific. And then down here, you're going to, again, you want to have a greeting. It's important that you have a greeting. Uh, because when you're when we're talking about the tone of your email, um, it just the tone of something is like, let's say you're having a conversation with someone. If you're really upset, they can tell by the tone of your voice. Right. Sometimes people um, you can tell that they're upset or that they're being rude to you just because of the way that they are speaking to you. And you can understand that by the tone of their voice with an email. You don't really get to see that because it's written out, right? You don't know, you don't know if they're being rude or if they're just typing it out in a certain way and it just sounds rude, or maybe they're really being really nice and they're actually meaning to be mean. I don't know, but you, um, you can't really tell as much with an email. And so sometimes people get offended if they think you're being rude. So the best thing to do is just avoid that completely by being polite. So one of the things that you will, you do when you talk to someone in real life is you greet them like, oh, hi, Mrs. Jimenez, right? So in an email, it's the same thing. So you'd want to say like, hello, um, and then the person that you're sending it to. And then you want to add a comma and just like in the letter and then just start your message underneath that. And then maybe you want to say like, I noticed. Um, Okay, sorry, um, needed to type that out. So, um, so you'd want to say something like, hello, Mrs. Jimenez, I noticed I'm missing credit for chapter 10 test. Um, also, you want to reread it so that you can catch mistakes, right? Like I just caught two. I noticed I'm missing credit for chapter 10 test. Um, can you please check and tell me why I took the test and turned it in? So I'm not sure why I don't have the, um, don't have credit. Um, thank you. And then you want to have, so thank you is your closing and then you want to have a signature. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name on here or I'm just going to put student so it doesn't sound weird. So student and then I'm going to maybe in my greeting line say I am a seventh grade from my school. Okay, so maybe that's what my signature is going to look like. I'm going to have a closing, which is thank you. Uh, my name, my grade, and my school. Now, this can get really annoying to type out every single time you're writing out an email, right? So I'm going to show you um, what you can do. But again, you just want to make sure you have the right 
email, you have a short subject on the subject line, you have a greeting, you have um, your details here, and then you have a closing with your signature and information about yourself so that that person knows exactly who you are and they give you the credit and not somebody else, okay? You read it, you make sure you're being polite. Again, that's tone, the tone of the email. You want to sound polite because people just react better and will help you a lot faster if you are being extremely um, if they can tell you're not being rude. I mean, most of the time as a teacher, we will reply and be extremely happy to help you anyway, but it's just nice to be nice, okay? So you send it out and then the person will get that email and they'll say who it's from and then it will give you the bold part here is the subject um, and I can tell this person's missing credit for their chapter 10 test and then I'll go in there, they were here, they were not absent and maybe I will reply and say, hey, please make sure that you're checking the no name section, maybe you missed it, um, you forgot to put your name or something, right? Okay, so to set up a um, signature line, you're going to go up here where this little um, gear looking thing is at and it says settings if you just place your mouse over it. Um, you click on it and you go into the settings and then you scroll down towards the middle and you'll see something that says signature. Okay, right here, signature. So this is added at the end of any outgoing messages. So right now it tells me there is no signature. So you want to create a new one. So you want to name it. So I'm going to name it teacher because I am a teacher and that's going to be my teacher signature. I'm going to create that. And then on the box to um, the side of it, you're going to write down what it is that you want at the bottom of every message. So for me, um, maybe I'll just put Miss Jimenez, right? Then I'm going to say um, world or history teacher, not world history, but just history uh, teacher. And then where, I, where I'm at. Oops. Getting capitalized. I'm doing this with one hand and it's really hard because I have a microphone on my other one. Uh, let's see. Okay. I know I could set up the stand and everything, but I didn't feel like doing that. Okay, so uh, Missy Menes, history teacher, Del High Middle School. And once I have that created, I'm going to scroll down a little bit and it says signatures default. So defaults. So where is it that you want to add these? So actually before that, I'm going to show you, you could have more than one signature. So maybe um, I'm going to write down like staff. Um, that's my staff signature. So if I'm talking like to other teachers, right? So then for them, I'm not Mrs. Jimenez. Right, they're gonna think I'm weird if I on my signature I say from Mrs. Menace. Um, to them, I'm their co worker, so it's my name, and then I can again say history and then Delheim. And um, I might even put my my class num my room number right on here, room, and then I'll put what that room is there. Um, and so now I have two. I have the teacher one, which is what I would send out to my students, and the staff one, which is what I would send out to people that I work with. Um, so I want to create a default down here. So it's a signatures default. Um, for this is saying for new emails, um, basically when you write a new email, which is the one that you want to be automatically the one that shows up there. So I want to be, um, I want to have the teacher one automatically show up there. And then you can just do that and leave it at that. Or if you want to have your signature whenever you reply to someone too, um, you will just choose that one there too. And then it knows that now it's going to add that to every single message. Then you scroll all the way to the bottom and it's really important that you save the changes. So you go ahead and save the changes. It's telling you, please wait, it's loading. And then it kicks you back to, um, to the homepage for the Gmail. And then now if you go in there to write a message, it shows up here, right? It shows your message box and it has your signature at the bottom. So you don't have to write it in every time. So you'd send out again, you write in all the stuff. This would be your subject. You want to make it short. Um, you'd have a greeting. Okay. And it, actually here is the part where I was talking about. If you have an automatic signature, do not start your message underneath it. It's really important that you don't start your message there, okay? You want to start your message above it. 
so you want to start above these two little lines here so you put your message here like hello right your greeting your message and then you want to um, have your your closing right here and then your um your name and everything's already there so you don't have to worry about that and then you just send it out right and then when i see it i see the subject and i see the greeting i see the message and then i i see the um who it's coming from okay so anyway that's how you write a message again um, you want to make sure you have the correct email. You want to make sure that you put the right things in the subject line. It should be short. It's like a little summary of what your email is about. Um, your greeting, your bo the body of the email is like the information that you're trying to, like the details, what it is that you want. That's where you, you know, you'd write down everything um, that you want this person to know. And then the signature uh underneath and then again you can set up that signature automatically you don't write beneath the signature again you're when you're writing a letter you don't write underneath your signature you write down the signature all the way at the bottom um so you want to write above that and then again the tone is really important that you are not rude that you sound polite um it's just you know kind of like when you talk to people you want to be polite to them uh and be nice to people so that they are happy to help you uh, but anyway, if you guys have any questions on how to write an email, uh, let me know. I hope this is helpful. I'm pretty sure this e um, this video is a lot longer than I meant it to be. Uh, and I apologize for that. But again, just make sure that you are following these steps when you're writing an email. Uh, let me know if I can help you guys with anything, okay?